in this video, uh, we will implement uh, the business layer of our REST API so that we can then start with the testing process and understand how we can test our REST API application. And let's just go over a quick summary of what we have learned in the previous videos. So in the first video, we had talked about um, what we'll be building, which is uh, unit testing our REST API application. We talked about the importance of uh, software testing in the software development lifecycle. We have also talked about uh, what JUnit is in the second video. And also uh, we saw some simple examples of JUnit. Uh, one is here where we see how we can prepare a test class, use the test annotations, and then basically write our tests for uh, our application. In the third video, we implemented the domain and persistence layers for our application, where we had implemented a book record and also had a book repository, uh, which extended the GPA repository uh, class. Now, in this video, let's start uh, implementing our endpoints and see uh, how that works out. So first we need to do a simple get mapping. So let's start with a get mapping and we just get all the books. So we'll do a public list of book and this will be get all book records. Let's make sure R is capital and uh, let's import the class and this will be return book repository dot find all. Pretty straightforward, as you uh, as you can see. Uh, the main reason why we are using the JPA repository is because uh, we get out of the box functions which can uh, automatically help us uh, with our uh, REST API database uh, implementations. So this is the get all book records. The next is a get book by ID. So we'll do a get mapping again, but this time the value which we need uh, is going to be the book ID. And once we have the book ID, we can return it back to the public or the client. So we, we are going to return a single book. So get book by ID. We will be having a path variable and this path variable is going to be having a value called as book id which is going to be a long book id and now let's quickly implement our book repository method so we return book repository dot find by id and we just give pass in the book ID into it. So as you can see, pretty straightforward. Uh, let me simplify this a little bit so that you know it's easier to read. Uh, pretty straightforward, uh, nothing to worry about here. Uh, return an optional. So this is going to be an optional book ID. Let's take care of that. Shouldn't be a big issue. Oh, all you can do is just do a get. So dot get and that should be helpful okay so now we need uh, it to be an optional but we can um, work about this later uh, in fact uh, we will be finding out uh, all of this issues in our unit tests uh, once this breaks so wait for that uh, let's finish implementing our CRUD API the next thing that we need is going to be the post mapping so at the rate post mapping and we are going to create a book record. So we'll do public book create book record. And now this is going to be coming in from the request body. And we have to make sure that it is a valid uh, book record. And this is going to be a book. record. And now uh, we return book repository, not book record, book repository dot save. And what we are saving is a book record. 
Now this will create and add the book as a value inside our tables and we will be having that book stored. We did not have to implement or write any C native uh, SQL queries for this. Uh, the Apache Derby in memory database takes care of all of this with the GPA repository interface that we extended. And we can only focus on our business layer and the business logic, which is to create, update, and find our books. Now, the last but not least inside our application is going to be updating the book record. So this is going to be uh, you know, a lengthier code. So let's start with it. So let's do a put mapping, public book update book record. This will also have a request body. So request body, this will also need to be valid. It will be a book called as a book record. Now let's actually make this uh, a bit better than our create book record uh, implementation. So first we do a check uh, to see if the book exists or not before we get it. So what we do is if book record is equal to null or book record dot get book ID is equal to null, then we can't really get the book back. So what we can do, is we can throw new not found exception and just say book record or id must not be null. And that's it for now. Let's see, we add the exception, no problem. Uh, next, we then do a get. So we do an optional book. I'm sorry about the dog. Uh, we get an optional book, which is equal to book repository dot find by ID. And we do a book record dot get book ID. Now we have an optional book. Now let's check if the book is actually present or not. So let's do a check if optional book dot is present, then we are good to go, but we want to do a check. So we'll do if not present, then what do we do? So we throw new not found exception, uh, which will basically say that book with ID, um, book record dot get, book ID does not exist sorry and now uh, once we have come till here we definitely know that the book does exist so all you have to do is go book existing book record is going to be optional book dot get and now we know for sure that the book exists and all we have to do is update its uh, attributes. So we do set, the book ID cannot change. So set name and we do book record dot get name. Uh, next thing that we will be doing is set summary to a book record dot get summary. And last but not the least is going to be ratings. Existing book record dot set rating, which is going to be book record dot get rating. And this way we have our book uh, record uh, done. All we have to do is save it again. So we do a return book repository, sorry, book repository dot save, and we do existing book record. Now we have updated the book record. We have everything here. So we have checked whether the book exists or not. We uh, did a check to uh, the database and make sure that the book is valid. Once we have the book, we had updated it and everything was looking good. So now we have uh, a good API ready, a well-written API ready where it has all the 
basic uh, requirements that we need for writing our unit tests, uh, which we'll start in the next video. So here, uh, as you can see, we have our book record, we have our book repository, and the controller includes um, the book repository, get all book records, get book by ID, create and update. Uh, delete, uh, we will be writing. So let's just do what to do. Um, write delete end point using TDD method. So this will uh, help us and remind us that we need to write another method called as delete. And we'll be do doing that using the uh, TDD method and see how that works. Uh, let's quickly uh, build our application and make sure that everything is working properly without any errors uh, so that we can then start with our unit tests. And the best part about this uh, is that, uh, writing unit is that, I don't need to check my uh, check whether my application is working or not with Postman or any other uh, API tool. All I have to do is write unit tests and if my unit tests are passing, then uh, the book controller and the book API is working perfectly. And if it's not for uh, not passing, if it's failing, then I need I know what I need to work on. So this uh, we can work on. So in the next video, uh, some derby uh, errors which we can definitely solve. But for now, uh, we have our API up and running. And in the next video, we will start with understanding how to write unit tests for our REST API application. Um, so thank you for watching and uh, make sure you uh, go through the links in the description below which talk about how JUnit works, talks about how uh, we can test REST API applications and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.